Okay, my name is Dale Smith. I'm Director of Creation for Bridge Training and Events. Uh, and I really wanted to just have a quick chat. This is what I like to do as we kick off. Sort of warm the crowd up, get you thinking in the, in the topic of what we'll be talking about. Who here has been to Bridge Talks before? Okay, so we've got quite a, quite a nice repeat. So I I have to tell new stories. Yes. New jokes all over again. Okay, so I'll have to come up with some new stuff. Really, I, I, I wanted to introduce a little bit more about uh, what we're doing here at Bridge Talks, but also to, to highlight a little bit of the experience that I've had with mindfulness. A very limited experience, and, and, I'm, and I'm a complete novice uh, and a self-professed novice. Uh, and I have to say that I've been, in, I've been looking forward to Michael's talk. Uh, as, as Especially having a little sneak preview of the slides today, it really, it, well, I'm quite excited to take me also to another level. I mean, mindfulness is, a, is an incredible subject and is a very vast subject. And I think within the hour that we have here the, uh, with Michael tonight, I want to give as much time to him as possible. Um, coming up, but coming up in our series, as you'll see, what we've now created is we've really defined the Bridge Talks brand. So we now have a series of these talks, um, and they will be con on constant rotation, looking at five, six different subject areas. So with, with Michael this evening, uh, we'll be looking at uh, what we talk about with mindfulness this evening. Uh, the next one of these will be next year, and we'll be looking inside the brain of an emotive leader. Now the next talk then we'll have coming up in November will be entrepreneurship. So it's a really nice lecture series and it's, it's my privilege to actually be part of this and, and bring great speakers to an audience in which we can actually share some gr creative and great ideas. Uh, I wouldn't do my job if I also didn't at least uh, let people know that we do have a great conference coming up as well as part of our Bridge event series. I believe that there are uh, copies of the brochure in everybody's pack. But we have put together a special offer just for people for Bridge Talks, uh, in which we, uh, over the next couple of days, if you did want to go on go on the event and you did book book a ticket, uh, use this code and it'll take f 50 pounds off the end booking price. Um, and feel free to give that code to other people within your organization if you are booking them. Uh, we just want to, the whole idea behind both Bridge Talks and with these events is very much for us, it's about how we can give knowledge to people. Our, it's not our primary business. Our primary business is working as consultancies and working as employee engagement and culture specialists with organizations. So for me, these events are really useful for us to share ideas with people so that we can all kind of stay abreast of what's current. <clears throat> and for those who have come to any of our Bridge Talks, you know how much I love to talk about the project that I worked on last year at O, o, o Spa. Well, O Hotel and Spa, O Resort and Spa. Uh, one of our big projects last year uh, was working in Palm Beach, uh, rebranding a Ritz-Carlton into a new fashion luxury property. Um, and in that, they have one of the 10th tenth, tenth best spas in the world. Uh, so yes, I got to stand in the rain shower and be mindful. Uh, but I brought this picture to you today because when I, with every talk that I do, I like to just step away from coming up here and talking about stuff and think about what does the topic mean to me? And why is it important? And the very first time I was introduced to even the concept of mindfulness as a topic was at, was at O Palm Beach Resort and Spa. And a few of the people there gave me a book around mindfulness in work. And so from that, and again, as I say, a complete novice, I just wanted to give you a couple of tips that people gave me and really begin to look at how mindfulness can be introduced into our lives, even as a very introductory side. And then that, I also want to then pass it over to Michael, who can give us the science and can really take us to another level within this room. So I have three objects for you to look at. My electric toothbrush, my journey to work. Who here gets on the underground in the morning? God, I look at a couple of faces What? okay. <laughs> the journey to work, and my alarm clock. So how can these be mindful tools and how could that change my life and how I see the world and how I feel about myself? So anybody want to s try to see how those three objects work as mindful tools? My job, I'll tell you. So really, these three objects work incredibly well. And it was one of the first objects was, personally, was my electric toothbrush. <coughs> Who here has an electric toothbrush? 
Who here moves their electric toothbrush while they're doing it? You're not supposed to. The whole idea of the electric toothbrush is that you don't move it, it actually does the work for you. So I've been now told. But however, I actually, with the first tool that uh, somebody with, at O Spa gave to me was about brushing your teeth in the morning. Now, I know it's the last thing that I do in the morning when I'm trying to rush out the door. I have my routine. I get up like a bear, and I grumble to the kitchen, I get my coffee, I go back to bed, I watch CNN, and I watch that, and I, and I haven't woken up yet. And I thought my mindful moment was really about my shower in the morning, my waking up time. But then actually somebody said to me, how mindful are you when you brush your teeth? What do you do? And for me, brushing my teeth was all about running out the door the last thing that I was doing, and actually using my electric toothbrush like this and running out the door. And someone said, how long do you do it? I said, I, mean, I don't know, one minute, two minutes? I don't know, I never really think about it. It's the last thing I do as I'm running out the door. And he said, why don't you just take that time and spend it on brushing your teeth? Not running out the door, not getting onto the next thing, just spend it brushing your teeth. And I have to say, when somebody gave me that little mindful <coughs> tip, it's actually changed the way I leave in the morning because I almost do it now almost jovial in a way. And I just take that opportunity to just do a task. And then I actually looked at the underground. And it was really the environment in which I was sitting in. And then what else could my mobile phone be for, can be for as opposed to sitting there texting, avoiding the world, listening to music, was really about helping me to be, to my memory, and helping me to be more mindful. No worries, come on in. So with my electric toothbrush, just in very short, I see that as one of my tasks. And that's very much about spending time appreciating the small stuff. And so whatever your electric toothbrush is, it's about really appreciating the small stuff. And I have to say, something as small as my electric toothbrush in the morning I can take two minutes and brush them like this while my mind is outside racing up the street, or I can take two minutes and just enjoy the experience. The underground, to me, I find solace in. I love asking people about the underground. And often people say to me, oh yeah, everybody's so miserable in the underground. And look at your own face. People who present, it's so miserable in the underground and look miserable. Well, no wonder people look back at you miserably. It's about how we present the environment to us. And I have to say, I actually love the underground. And maybe, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm a, slight ma a slightly bit mad or overtly Canadian, where we just say hi to everybody. <laughs> like, it's, like you still live in a village of four people. Hi, I'm Canadian. But I love the underground. I've had some great times in the underground. I spend great times people watching. Either I'm talking to random strangers and enjoying the environment in which I create, or I actually just love being in the underground. It's just a moment when you can actually be mindful and just spend some time people watching, just being. Because I think one of the worst things that's happened to me is the fact that I can now get internet reception in the underground. <clears throat> I, as much as I loved it when it happened it's actually taken away some of the joy of the underground which was just like an airplane to me it's that few minutes of journey time when it's just me and the world and then the, so be with the environment find calm in the most unlikely of places you choose that so therefore you choose the perception of how you see the underground <clears throat> if you see the underground like everybody's miserable or also, hey, what's going on? The world is a mirror of how we feel. And then the last one I talk about, uh, which is somebody gave this to me as well as a, as a very quick tip, it was to set a mindful alarm. And I set it at one o'clock every day. And it was really just so when it rings, it just reminds me simply to build it into my daily routine. And so at one o'clock every day, my alarm was going off and it just made stale stop. Whatever you're doing, it just take 30 seconds if you cannot afford 30 seconds for yourself in the middle of a busy day, then mindfulness will never work for you. However, I do have a, another tip. Pick a time that works. 
Because I chose one o'clock, it's no longer one o'clock because it seemed to be going off in every meeting that I was having. Um, and it was going off at the wrong time constantly. In the middle of a training course, my mindful alarm would be ringing off. And then I would have to explain it and it took away the purpose of it. So whenever your 30 seconds is, grab that time. So I have an alarm on my phone, not physically such as this, but it just reminds me at some times in the day to just stop and just allow myself the pleasure of just being. And then the last one, if you have the luxury, is to take your own space, to take time for yourself to recharge. Um, I, I've been very fortunate at Bridges. We had a, a little closet kind of thing at the bottom of our stairs in our office, and it just was a store cupboard. And, I, and I've now created a creative space for myself. And nobody else wanted to go in there. It has no windows. It's just got two big circular windows in the ceiling. But I've managed to paint it and decorate it and put a funky sofa and a massive whiteboard in there. And that's just going to be my space. And I, and I now feel very, I feel very privileged that I have my space. That I can just go and be away from people and just recharge. Because with many of our jobs and our roles and responsibilities, we have that desire to be creative. But to creative has to come from energy. And we have to find that space. So those are just some of my very quick tips that I can give you that has been given to me. Uh, I've been doing this for now for about a year or so. And I have to say, honestly, it has transformed often the way I approach creativity, but actually how I stop and stop running forward. And I actually don't brush my teeth like this. I let the machine do it for me. And I actually you can utilize that time to just benefit from the time while the machine does the work. OK, so. Uh, I would now it's my ultimate privilege to pass you over to Michael. Uh, uh, Michael Chaskinson is is, a, is I've I've seen him speak before and he's a great speaker. Uh, he's an entrepreneur, uh, a, an author, I've, and I my book is out there. I'm going to bring, give you a copy of my book. I'm sorry, Michael. I've left it outside, not being very mindful. I'm reading one of Michael's books at the moment, and I have to say that it is an incredible book. Uh, it's very easily written, and I think for somebody like me, I need to have a bit of storytelling, and it allows me to follow the path. So he's an author, a speaker, a coach, uh, a trainer, a lecturer, uh, and a great and an amazing thinker. So it's my pleasure to pass you over to Michael, uh, and he's going to spend some time with you, uh, bringing you some new knowledge and information that I'm sure you're going to walk away with some great tips. Okay, thank you.